good evening uh, so yeah we are here again with another uh, master class i would like to introduce uh, dr asha bhatia she is the director of research and is a phd in management studies and an mba with specialization in finance and hr she has an experience of 23 years in diverse functions which include experiential learning inclusive higher education working with public policy institutions and the private sectors policy design implementation and advocacy social and economic uh, development brand building international relations change management social entrepreneurship capacity building stakeholder and employee engagement there is much more to add on to her you know profile or to make her introduce to yourself but uh, i will end it up here and ma'am it is an honor to have you with us today and uh, you may take it over thank you so much thanks a lot trisha for that uh, honorable introduction that you've given thanks a lot and uh, hello everyone today we're going to talk on uh, innovations and sustainability and i would like to start uh, i have a small presentation here i would like to start sharing my screen so i'll start uh, risha is it fine yes ma'am perfect is my slide visible to everyone yes it is all right so today we're going to talk on innovations for sustainability now sustainability is something that is really trending the topic is trending and uh, Uh, can i know from uh, the audience here what do you mean by sustainability anyone ingoing re uh, resource equals uh, um, uh, incoming resource equals outgoing resource okay anyone else thank you very much a uh, use of a resource in a way that we don't uh, we don't destroy it or we don't overuse it all right thank you for my use yeah so uh, to ensure that uh, the resources are not depleted right so let's see what is sustainability a strategy by which communities seek economic development approaches that also benefit the local environment and the quality of life so basically what are we looking at sustainability we're looking at sustainability from three important points we're trying to save the profits planet and the people so it is the three p's that we look at right and what is innovation so when you have uh you know a a need for a product and you also find that it is feasible and then it makes profit it's why profitably viable that is when it comes to innovation okay now i have a very i was going through uh, a very interesting article on a product called aditya you know what is aditya it is india's first solar ferry okay now we're going to talk a lot about uh, sustainability in terms of resources so we are trying to save the energy resources and here comes aditya aditya was uh, invented by navneet solar and it's an electric boat uh, so navneet solar and electric boats is the name of the company which uh, manufactured aditya and it's uh, in partnership with kerala state water transport department and you'll be surprised to know and very happy to know that it's the first ferry in the world to have 80% energy requirements through solar anybody from karnataka or kerala so next time you all visit kerala i i do urge you to you know uh, visit the uh, this ferry if you can and uh, it has a seating capacity of almost 75 people so this is why is it uh, viable and feasible and it has the need so it's uh, it has a capacity of 75 people which it is ferrying across and it is using solar so what is innovation basically it's turning an idea into a solution that adds value from a customer's perspective 
now you have to look at what is the need of the customer and if it is satisfying the need only then can it can that idea be called an innovation okay so you may have ideas but you use technology and turn it into uh, something that uh, benefits the customers and then it becomes an innovation vedant you have anything to say like i said we are looking at three areas economic social and environment we look at the three p's okay profit people and the planet and a sum of these leads to when you do something new come up with a new idea and this in any of these it re results in sustainability now uh we call us uh, we talk of sustainable innovation which involves making intentional changes to a company's products services or processes to generate long term social and environmental benefits while creating economic profits for the firm so again we see these three important terms here social environmental and economic profits so uh, if you look at the unilever company can anyone tell me what are the products of unilever so they are like into mostly into consumer products like b2c major products. fmc major fmc, major FMC products so these are not only your soaps they are also detergents they have uh, fabric conditioners then there are uh, nutritious foods so what is unilever doing to make its products and processes sustainable it has a plan 2030 okay and all the products uh, that you find of unilever they ensure that all the stakeholders benefit from these products so they believe in sustainable agriculture then the nutritious food whatever they are packaging uh, that has to be sustainable products that they are using and also these detergents fabric conditioners all of them if you see water is used right so they design products which use minimum amount of water so these are the innovations that a company like unilever is making now uh, if you look at so we're talking about sustainability now there are three pillars of sustainability environmental social and governance all these three make up sustainability so why is this esg you know gaining so much importance they're saying that 86% of S&P 500 firms release sustainability or corporate sustainability reports compared to just 20% in 2011 so now all the corporates leading corporates they have to release or talk about the sustainability highlight the sustainability in the sustainability reporting okay and investors also are in, interested in investing in companies which have uh published the sustainability reports or which are doing a lot of work in the area of sustainability now sustainability like i said it has three pillars environmental governance and social so environmental takes care of climate change greenhouse gas emissions there is resource resource depletion so many people said uh, some of you you know mentioned that uh, taking care of resources ensuring that uh resources are not depleted then there is deforestation in the area of social you look at the working conditions of the people then you also look at how you can benefit the local communities take care of the health and safety and also look at diversity diversity means looking at gender there should not be any gender bias okay and then in terms of governance you have to have fair practices the executive pay this should not should not be any bribery and corruption there should be diversity on board and also there should be a fair tax strategy so why do companies need esg it throws light on basically how companies you know need to work with a given amount given criteria that so that they do not exploit the environment more than okay. its potential oh. it is more like a responsibility like corporate social responsibilities which the companies need to uh, abide by okay you know it's uh, something we give back to the community as because as in corporate we need to give back to the society where we are working upon all okay so now csr act uh, the companies act of 2013 it has made csr mandatory 
uh, in India. So okay. India is the only country which has contributing uh, to CSR and reporting CSR mandatory. Okay, so two percent of the company's profit has to be uh, given to or has has to be utilized in the area of CSR. So that is how it has become mandatory now. Okay, now uh, did okay. Now there are a lot of examples that you have in the area of sustainable innovation. Can anyone share some examples? Now we've talked about sustainability. We're talking about uh, you know environment, how to make the environment uh, friendly, and products uh, to come up with products which are environment friendly. So can anyone share any examples that you have? Um, electric vehicles are a prime example. Okay. Hyper loops. Shamik, are you there? <laughs> Hydrophonic, hydrophonic process yes. of agriculture. Uh, I am on route to Kolkata. So. Oh. Okay. Anyone else wants to share any examples that you have seen? Uh, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so in Singapore, they collect the garbage waste, and mm -hmm. uh, when they burn the waste, they'll be getting the uh, heat from it, and uh, they'll be producing like uh, uh, electric electricity from that, and uh, they'll be using in the country, and the rest of the waste they'll be uh, using for the other things. So they actually burn garbage. Yeah, but that's not a very good. Uh, oh, ma'am, in uh, like in some gyms is doing in Karnataka, they are restoring the lake lake bodies, water bodies specifically. Uh, I don't remember the name of the lakes, but there are two three lakes which are restored in last two three years by the Infosys. Um, some European countries are uh, building giant solar farms in uh, in Africa, like uh, near uh, near equator and uh, in uh, in Egypt. So okay. you know they can farm large amounts of electricity from there because uh, the temperature there is higher and also the availability of sunlight is more. Right. Thank you, Abha. So that is about solar. Uh, there are two of you raised your hands. Can you please? Uh, Yes, ma'am. Unmute yourself and speak. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I had an example for uh, sustainable innovation. Ma'am, uh, in my city, the district administration has uh, taken a initiative to uh, make all the landfills as community parks. So they oh. use chemical treatment methods to treat all the waste uh, in the Sorry. landfills, and then they cover it up with soil and concrete and. Convert it into community parks. They have reclaimed about 36 acres of land in Bhopal. Yes, ma'am. Okay, excellent. I should not tell me your city. Ma'am, Bhopal. Bhopal. Okay. 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 okay, okay, okay. So in Bhopal, you've uh, so the uh, the administration has taken uh, a stand to convert landfills. Yes, right? ma'am. Excellent. Anyone else wants to share? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Viraj. Yeah, I actually read about, uh, about the article of that uh, smoke project, uh -huh. wherein the in Korea it is based in Korea. This is purify purify purification of air through okay. you know ionization process. This uh, process is practiced in Korean country as well and in European countries as well. I okay. think this is the best I can I read about. It. Okay, so that's how you use technology. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Ma'am, the government of India is also taking so many initiative uh, moving towards sustainable development like we are uh, switching to solar uh, power plants and we are establishing the uh, the biggest solar power plants in Gujarat in Bhopal also we recently had a very big solar power plants. So the mm -hmm. government initiatives that I'm talking about. Okay, great. So we had uh, you talking about government initiatives, and somebody talked about their own city. Somebody talked mm -hmm. about internationally what's happening. Um, I have Delhi metros. Yes. Delhi metros are Delhi metros are working on uh, 60 to 65 percent of the Delhi metros are working now on solar power, ma'am. All right, Rich. Thank you for that information. Anyone else 
or yeah. an hydrogen car is also there okay apart from the electric cars you have another innovation in hydrogen also, cars yeah i'd like to talk about corporations so because they play a major role in this and uh, companies like reliance group and adani group set an example for a lot of corporations by switching from fossil fuels to uh, wind power and uh, solar panels which a lot of other mnc's are now emulating so you know that's loading emissions a lot in uh, multinational cities and you know big cities and we're seeing the results of that the pollution levels are decreasing especially in delhi and mumbai so that has helped a lot because you know we do need the help of the multinational corporations and definitely their corporations. definitely each one of us has to do it at an individual level at the corporation level and at the corporate level okay exactly thank you anak and uh, they are so can we move on sorry so i got a big example like it is a green business school yeah i'll come to that one years is also one of the yes yes thank you very much for that i'm saving it for uh, the end i'm going to talk uh, okay. about ubs of course uh, ma'am um there is a small there is a small product uh, like we have never ending notebooks these days which can be you know wiped by a clean you know damp cloth and that for you know uh, protecting uh, uh, trees and all that yes ma'am i'm talking about uh, never ending notebooks uh, that, that uh, we can use it uh, you know uh, as, after you know wiping it uh, from by a you know, clean cloth and therefore we uh, are saving trees yeah yes abhishek yeah i'm actually going like to uh, discuss about the green hydrogen uh, of policy of uh, government of india uh, in the united nations as government of india published uh, around zero policy of carbon in 2017 approx so for that uh, india initiated green hydrogen project for that uh, we use wind energy as a uh uh the renewable energy uh using that uh, we break down the uh, uh methane into hydrogen and uh, uh, composition of carbon because uh, there is uh, uh if carbon uh, ejected outside the atmosphere the then uh, it will impact uh okay okay. Yeah. okay thank you for that chemical equation but overall we are talking about renewable energy thank you abhishek yeah thank you anyone else Uh, ma'am uh, these days research is being done on the basis of uh, domestic mini wind turbines which could uh, harness wind energy and produce electricity at domestic levels so right. they are in the in under research so renewable energy for domestic purpose also yes okay all right thank you this is a very interactive uh, bunch of students we have here thank you for all your inputs and uh, so i have a few examples too which i'll share So can you see my slide? So there is a smog free project, you know, which is uh, actually using the pollution from the air and uh, transforming it to make jewelry. And there's a green building initiative uh, now through this Groesis water box. This grow you can grow trees in the desert, and uh, you have herb gardens, and uh, there is also some sustainable plastic. and we are always talking about no plastic right so uh, an innovation has come up with making plastic sustainable and of course uh, the sea bin project talks about cleaning the oceans safely with trash bins okay now i have a very interesting video for you and we'll watch this video and then we'll have some discussion all of you ready to watch a video yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. 17 year old Arita. Can you hear? Thousand tons of plastic from England, which had gotten plastic fabrics. India produces 10,000 tons of plastic waste every single day. That's roughly three and a half million tons of plastic waste every single year. Out of the 30 percent goes to landfill, and almost a Hundred years. This is the story of Aditya Bangla, a seventeen-year-old from Rajasthan who is converting nearly ten tons of plastic into fabrics of clothes. 
every single day. I've seen that event on the East China Canal, where I saw this amazing plant which is converting large quantities of plastics into carbon. And there I get stuck into my mind that having a unit back like this in India will not only reduce plastic wastes going into the landfill, but create employment. Began with an idea of the splashed pulse of bio I pitched the idea to my parents and my uncle. They supported me right from the start. From my side, we continued researching and studying the huh? And as a result to his determination, crash pressure was launched. In January 2021, we opened the factory. And have been able to provide employment to more than 100 people and we convert 10 tons of plastic waste to fabric. Aditya hopes to increase the production size to convert more plastic waste into reusable fabrics, stopping them from entering the landfill. If you find the story of Aditya inspiring, you share it with your family and Okay. For more such inspiring stories, keep watching The Better Angel. Hey, I'm so hungry. Suhani, can you go and mute, please? Ami. Suhani. Mommy. Suhani. Yes, I'm sorry. All right. Um, so, could you watch this video and could you listen to what Aditya had to say? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It was clear. Yes, ma'am. It was clear. Okay. Yes, so, what? What was the take takeaway from this video? That something that we assume is harmful can maybe convert it into something that's useful. Okay. An idea uh, changes everything. That, idea changes uh, everything. Okay. That he has uh, created something, created something sustainable from right. what we assume to be a, uh, uh, you know, waste. Waste. Right. Yeah, yeah. He created something sustainable. That's more important because if it if it wasn't sustainable, that it could not last. Right. Anyone and else? Even government of India was using recycled plastic for making roads. It was in the news a couple of months. Oh. Ma'am, so, here the key ma point was that uh, he believed in his idea. He first of all started, he pitched to his father and uncle. They supported him. And then he gone. Right. He, he believed in his idea. And so he was able to do it on a large scale. Ma'am, plastic is such a big problem that it is not bi non-biodegradable. And uh, it, so it is not, not reusable. And uh, changing it in an uh, opportunity like fabric yes. is such a big thing because fabric is very usable and changing the plastic such a big problem into fabric is a very big achievement. Right. So I thought I found this video very interesting and very different. Um, creating wealth from waste. <laughs> okay. So I have a lot of uh, captions and those one-liners that maybe you can send to Aditya and he can use it for his project. Deshna wanted to say something. I could see that she had raised her hand. Yes, ma'am. Thinking out of the box, uh, it is something that we all talk about, but he really put it into the uh, implementation, ma'am. Yes. So, like I said, you can come up with any number of ideas, but these ideas have to be uh, viable. And they have to be feasible, right? So this is uh, an idea that people believed in. And he got all the support and he was able to convert that idea into a project and into a business venture. So Kamlesh, you want to say something? Ma'am, uh, is the fabric safe for human skin as it is made of from plastic? I'm sure they must have uh, treated it. And then it can be used in any way then. In any the way. Plastic. 
if they're making fabric from the plastic then they can make anything if the plastic is not is the plastic is getting safe after yes. making fabric right then so they can is, use it for any, in any way yes that can be used in any way but somebody has to come up with that idea now aditya has come up with that idea maybe kamlesh can come up with some other idea yeah sure ma'am <laughs> okay the two more participants who raised their hands yes am um, reebok have already took a step similar like uh, this project uh, they have also collected the waste of uh, these kind of waste and they have uh, took a step to create shoes of uh, those uh, recycled product like if they have created the fabric and uh, then they have took a step to make shoes of those kind of waste okay Um, I would like to add something. Uh, some scientists in uh, Japan, Japan has fa- have found a kind of bacteria that can actually decompose plastic. Okay, great. So that's something you know. Yes. So um, thank you um, for would, adding. Your I input. would like to say that uh, uh, it is a great uh, example that uh, we should not uh, cry over our problems. We should try to get an innovative solution for it. Right, it and there is great. always an opportunity in a problem. and that's a positive yes. way of looking at things yes. right ayush so this is exactly what aditya has done now there are some more innovations is 3d printing so plastic cups which are shredded they have been used to make uh, plastic earrings mohsin you want to say something mohsin had raised his hands no ma'am no ma'am all right so this is how it looks like okay uh then there's vertical farming this is used uh, you know this uh, farming is done using hydroponic uh green house on a 30 foot uh building yeah, but we also do that is startup yes we also do that on campus here and i'll be sharing a lot of work that we are doing here now this is also about desalination uh this is an invention a joint venture between MIT uh that's the Massachusetts University Institute of Technology and the Jan irrigation system which turns salt water into consumable water and this is done using solar energy and of course there's also a uh, battery storage okay so you don't uh, depend on fossil fuels and uh, this is how you can store your energy and there are some zero emission buildings so net zero buildings which say produce at the least as much electricity as it consumes and uh, we all know that plastic is a, you know it's a hazard and it's an hazard to marine existence so it causes around 13 billion dollars of damage to marine ecosystems every month every year so that is how you need to clean up and ensure that uh, you know you are not polluting the environment now i'll come to the case of uh, the universal business school like someone mentioned saying that uh, yes even universal business school is uh, ranked as a green business school okay so what are we doing uh, to ensure that you know we are protecting the environment uh, the we're looking after the people and at the same time we are uh, making profit to sustain so you've already heard of the universal business school a lot has been uh, there's a lot of information has been shared with you all tips can you go on silent please mute yourself so we had- Our yes, vision yes. is to create impactful knowledge, develop innovative, ethical, responsible, and uh, global leaders who will transform organizations and society at large. And we have different programs. We have also a global presence because we have tie-ups with a lot of universities abroad. Now, if you see uh, the pictures of UBS and how it has transformed, you know we like to uh, walk the talk. so we practice what we are preaching so we say go sustainable uh, sustainable we talk of sustainability but we also practicing sustainability on campus 
and this is how UBS looked. Uh, you know, this is a picture of taken at uh, in two thousand eight, and this is how it looks now. Now, um, lush green. So this is how it was earlier, and now, can you see the buildings? Can you see the transformation? All of you. Yes, you see the yes. yes. This is how it looks now. So we are also practicing ESG environment. We take care of the energy consumption, pollution control. uh based management uh in terms of social we look at uh, human rights and there's no forced labor no child labor we look at community welfare then stakeholder health and safety and the quality when you're looking at governance so another important pillar is governance we uh look at like board independence and uh, this transparency and there is diversity So, talking of environmental aspects, seventy uh, percent of the energy which is used at UBS comes from our solar park, and we have a sixteen acres of green zone habitat, and which has uh, different uh, flora and fauna. There are different uh, species of frogs, snakes, birds, and seven thousand five hundred plant species. There is dedicated water harvesting, and we have clean energy. so we pride ourselves in calling ourselves as a green bee school okay so 7500 different plant species and uh, we we follow the agro forestry system so we have an amalgamation of forestry species then we have horticulture and we also have agricultural crops all that together this is how the students also work uh, in on campus in some projects and this is the solar uh, you know uh, park that we have it also works uh, as a car park uh so this is a dedicated solar rooftop system that we have 300 kilowatts is the total energy we produce and uh, because like i said it's not only a solar park it's also used for as a parking space and sometimes for our cultural activities so it's a green zone the campus is a green zone no outside vehicles permitted electrical vehicles fly and there's a smoke it's a smoke free zone and the main building it has been designed by an american architect and we are also a plastic free zone so um, there are this uh, we have special technology fans that consume almost 50% per less electricity there are power saver led installs and on campus you will not see any plastic bottles so if you are coming to campus please don't carry any plastic plastic bottles only steel water bottles are allowed on campus and the buildings that we have uh, they have double sided wall claddings and which reduce the emissions by almost 10% So uh, we believe in water harvesting. There are three dedicated rain uh, water harvesting in two acres of land. We have four wells, and all our water requirements are uh, met by these uh, rainwater harvesting plants. And uh, waste management. We have three waste management plants installed inside the campus. We have uh, green and blue dustbins. So we are segregating our waste and. Uh, at source and we've also installed a machinery worth almost 12 lakhs for food waste valorization so the leftover food is valorized for uh, preparation of biogas and uh, we don't waste any food um, so it's all distributed to the ground and the housekeeping staff and uh, over the years we have reduced our uh, food wastage by almost 80% okay and the waste water is also utilized in irrigation of our agricultural crops and of flower pots and uh, we've also installed hydroponics setups on campus we have drip irrigation we have sprinklers all across the uh, plantation sites now talking about the social aspect you know we have uh, because kajat uh, in kajat the uh, ubs is located in a tribal area so we have empowered almost 550 tribal community members and uh, more than 50 uh, 
we are talking about 50 but i think it's almost 75 local tribal women uh, are in, you know they're employed as our staff and uh, we have we conduct programs on capacity building 314 local tribal farmers have been empowered then uh, uh, the students go and conduct you know programs on health and hygiene uh, for these local tribal children more than 500 local tribal children have been educated then like i said tribal women provided jobs on campus and uh, uh, we have also partnered with enactus any of you know what does enactus stand for uh, do you have enactus in any of your colleges no ma'am okay so enactus is a uh, it's an international organization which uh, is uh, leading in the area of social entrepreneurship so what the students here do uh, and it's a platform which uh, has students faculty and corporate members so the students on uh, uh, campus they are working with another ngo called uh, light of light trust and through that they have empowered women uh, beneficiaries okay now this is a project pana uh, where you know these women have been taught how to manufacture masks and uh, so we are making uh, we are helping these women to become micro entrepreneurs and uh, through these now these uh, women they manufacture these masks and our students help them to sell these masks or market these masks so that is how uh, we are helping these women to become entrepreneurs now during floods a lot of support was given by the institute and more than 500 more than 100 families were supported with daily utility items then um, on all our uh, working force you know uh, they are sourced locally so you have the groundsmen and everybody from the local community uh, yeah this is what i was talking about in actors and there's another project where the students are working with uh, are working in this area to uh, reduce uh, or to you know prevent blindness okay that's a project called ikshana and for that uh, the enactus ubs has partnered with another university in usa the university of uh, wisconsin at whitewater and the students together are working on this project so there's a lot of work that was done during the uh, covid times and food items and etc were provided to more than 100 families then uh, a concrete road is so when you are coming to ubs you pass through the villages and there were no concrete road so that has been built you know uh, ubs as an institute has been doing that and uh, basic infrastructure material also it's procured from the local vendors so we are helping them to uh, and providing them with their livelihood now here i was talking about i spoke about the environment then i talked about social and now i would like to talk talk about the governance aspect what we are doing in terms of governance uh, so we have equal representation of women and men 50/50 uh, ratio of faculty members male as well as female and uh, we have a, so we we are very transparent so we have a dedicated students handbook then we have a faculty handbook where all the necessary instructions are given uh, and uh, that is shared by with all the faculty and the uh, students and we have an anti ragging committee so that's headed by a senior professor then we have a prevention of sexual harassment committee which is headed by another senior female professor uh, we have posters and banners placed all across the campus on anti ragging then we have different clubs for students where students are leading uh, they have this you know they also trained to be leaders then we have class representatives class coordinators uh, for all the programs and these coordinators or leaders or representatives are supposed to voice the concern of all the students we conduct town hall faculty meetings every 3 months to felicitate the top performers even that is very transparent um, and uh, everyone or anyone can come up and talk and uh, you know put forward their concern 
So uh, the Institute believes in equality, transparency, innovation and accountability. And we also follow a bottom up approach. So we say that every stakeholder has the right to voice his concern. Uh, so lately, uh, we have come up with some innovations or uh, initiatives on campus. Uh, we launched a Girl Up Club uh, that is for girls, by girls. And this is an initiative of the United Nations. Uh, now we're also talking about mental health okay, at UBS. So we have a wellness room. And uh, you can go to that room and uh, there is, you're not allowed to take any technological gadgets. So your phones and everything has to be left out. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, you can do some painting, uh, reading, music, uh, all that uh, in that room. And uh, another thing is that uh, the Institute has come up, we're supporting SDGs. Uh, so sustainable development goals. And what we have done is every faculty has been given an SDG. So they are called the SDG champions. And then there are students working with the faculty members who are supporting uh, the SDGs. So together they are working on various SDGs. And we've also launched recently an entrepreneurship development cell. Uh, so like I told you, we already are working on certain, certain social entrepreneurship projects on campus. And uh, another uh, e-cell, now that's going to take on entrepreneurship, core entrepreneurship projects. So if we take the overall, uh, you know, performance of UBS in terms of the SDG goals that we are impacting. So here are a few. I'm sure there are more, but these are some that I could put down. So no poverty and uh, zero hunger. And there are also reasons why we have put these goals and uh, to support uh, these goals. These are the examples that I've given. So good health and well-being. Then the quality education, we're talking about gender equality, uh, decent work and economic growth. Like we said, more than 200 people uh, include faculty, administrative staff, all these have been given, uh, provided with jobs. So we have equal representation from female and male faculty members, reduced inequalities. Then the industry innovation and in infrastructure, like I said, we were, we were talking about reduced energy consumption and we are using modern energy uh, fans, LED lights, all of that to reduce uh, the um, gas house emissions. And uh, we've installed uh, so responsible uh, consumption and production. Uh, we said that we have reduced uh, wastage of food and uh, right from 40 kg is what we started with now it's just 5 kg per day so if you're coming to campus please make sure that uh, you know come with a uh, mindset that you're not going to waste any food here and uh, climate action like we have more than 7500 plant species and their various life habitats and uh, all of that and we're using energy which is produced in-house and the future objectives, very interestingly, uh, we have come up with our own ESG report, uh, one of the top four institutes in the country uh, to come up with the ESG report. We're also almost in, a, you know, in the process of becoming a member of PRME, which is uh, Principles of Responsible Management in Education, uh, in higher education. So, that's what we are uh, aiming to be and uh, watershed management we are uh, trying to improve that and uh, very importantly we have introduced a component of green in every course curriculum each course each module has green so we have green finance uh, green operations uh, green marketing all of that and uh, with this, I uh, want to conclude because I'm almost reaching the end of the presentation and then conclude with this quote of Phil Harding who says that look after our planet and it will look after us or don't and you face the consequences. So thank you very much and
um guys if anybody has any questions you can ask ma'am right now any questions ma anyone uh, ma'am do we have any activity to complete on polo app that cold pull app sorry cold pull app yeah do we have any activity to complete on that today yeah I means today or in coming uh, days kushbu uh, kushbu we shall be you know uh, sending the notification will be coming to you regarding the call call uh, okay. if you have activated your email id and password over there the concerned counselor will get in touch with you okay ma'am yeah any other queries uh ma'am i would like to ask that uh, you spoke about all these initiatives that uh, the institute has took with the uh, merging with uh, different ngos so ma'am how are the students are going to be involved in this like uh, do we get to do the field work and uh, get into their operations or uh, uh, how do we contribute in that that's what i want to ask yes so uh, i wish you can actually be a part of this uh, entire uh, project where students go and visit those ngos we also have a smart project where it is compulsory for all the students to go and uh, visit the ngo uh, work with the beneficiaries work in the community okay understood ma'am thank you yes ma'am can you please elaborate a bit more on the club activities so club activities there are various clubs uh, i'm sure you'll get to know them once you uh, come on board because uh, i won't remember the names of all the clubs but uh, there are clubs related to marketing finance then there is um, uh, operation supply chain then there is tech tech club and uh, then there is inactus and uh, csr and ethics club everything uh, you know we have uh, a flavor of uh, each functional area and you can choose which one you want to be a part of thank you ma'am Uh, ma'am, uh, I'm Shamik. Yes, Shamik. Yes, ma'am. Just want to ask a couple of questions. That is, I have always been a part of the CSR activity in the working profiles where I have worked for. Under my at international, I've been a member of Nature Watch and I Can India and Better International. So okay. there is that separate uh, motto of clubs usually go into play. Some with nature, some with the social work. Right. Yeah. So how many clubs are like? Which is the clubs and which uh, activate for what the kind of social purposes? So there is ethics and CSR club, and uh, which looks after all the CSR activities, and also works with the community. And then you have the Inactus club, which uh, works with the community, but this is all in the area of entrepreneurship. So we are not as in the Inactus club. You don't just go and uh, work for charity. You're not doing charity. You're helping the community uh, to build up their entrepreneurial skills. So I think, and uh, there is also the Road Track Club. So I, I can uh, immediately yes, think yes. of these three clubs which are working in this area. Yes, yes, been a member. That's why I'm asking. Like, is there any other? Yeah. So Shamik, you will find synergies in these three clubs. Thank you very much, ma'am. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, hi. Hello, ma'am. Yes, Mox. Uh, like, uh, I don't know how how relevant is this question. but uh, i wanted to ask about this uh, uh, before before for some months ma'am uh, do you know sadguru ma'am yes of course who's not going to sadguru he was talking about uh, our soil is dying right in 2021 december he has posted a video okay of our soil is dying uh, like okay. uh, nearly by 40 years but i don't understand man that how scientifically uh, is our soil dying and what will be consequences we facing ahead and so, how we can help about so moksha i think this is a question which will need uh, a lot of explanation and i don't think we have that much of time here but i'll advise you to go and read more on this and uh, when you are talking about uh, environmental sustainability what we are doing at uh, ubs in terms of you know growing more uh, plants trees and uh, that saves the fertility of the soil all of that i think somewhere contributes to it 
Thank you, Risha, and thank you, everyone. It was an excellent uh, interactive session. I hope you all are uh, excited to come to UBS. Um, like we said, uh, as I said, yes, we practice what you what we preach, and it's truly a green preschool.